Boy, but we got a weird one for you this week. That's right. It's me. It's you. It's, and it's her. her. And her. This week, our special guest is Miss Ma'am. She all the way from New York. And I'm the real Big Dipper. And I'm David Cross. And we have a wonderful discussion. We get a phone call from one of our favorite bottoms, Tops, Kiki Ball Change. That's right. So thanks for calling in, Dr. Ball Change. And listen as we discuss the history of Miss Ma'am She and where she came from and why she does it. M. Oh. M. Mom. When your first choice is a big old bus, you turn around and boom, you end up with us. Our number is 213-536-9180. Our email is sloppysecondspot at gmail.com. Now on with the show. Oh, how you stop, you stupid little f***, you nasty f***, you dirty f***. Welcome back to Sloppy Seconds with Big Dripper and Meatball. I'm... David Cross. Mr. Sir He. Okay, I see what you're doing here. And you're Berg Derper. Berg Derper. I'm sitting here in front of a mirror. Because just the mirror, just the, the mirror, mirror and, and me. me. Oh, you punched me? I yeah. punched myself. My mirror is smarter than I am. Are those the glasses you wear all the time? Yes. Slightly. I didn't realize that we both wore clear glasses. I would call those brown. They're clear. I can see through them. I see you. You know what I mean? <laughs> but they have a tint to them. Yeah. Yours are, I, Okay. But they're clear. Well, they're translucent. Translucent. I'm not doing well. I'm living for love on the beard. We'll talk about how you do meth later. Uh, why don't you introduce our guest? Please welcome. It's Brooklyn's own mean queen. Girl, where do you think you're going? She made you a plate of spaghetti. And now she wants to know why you're asking for an open relationship. It's Miss Mamshi. Hello, ma'am. Oh, my God. Hi, Diva. Welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for being here. The wild and wacky sloppy world. Oh, my God. Thank you. Here, let me center myself. Sickening. <laughs> You've been working, working, working. Where were you before L.A.? So before LA, I was in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But like right before LA, I was in New York for like two days for the Lunar New Year. Mm -hmm. And then now I'm here. And then next I'm in San Francisco. Wow, it's nonstop. No, it is draining. I have to keep moisturizing or it's going to show on my face. <laughs> is this um, sort of type of travel schedule new-ish for you? Um, Are you beginning your global domination? Oh Are you Lady Gaga in 2008 doing any little <laughs> chicken uh, podcast because soon you will be the star? Oh, my God. No, soon I'll have my own podcast Oop. here just called She. Hers is. Okay. Hers is. Um, no, yeah. So like, I think Sheree might have an issue if you call it She. <laughs> yeah. She going to fight you. No, it's fine. Just don't tell her. Okay. Just don't tell her. Um, oh. No, this is like my second time doing something like this. Last year, I traveled to a few states as well. Yeah. But I think um, this is like the first time I'm like mostly flying to travel to go somewhere because usually like I'm an Amtrak diva, you know, sit on that lovely seat, you know, take that two hour ride, maybe hour and a half. Like, but now here I am like. <sighs> Where are you taking the Amtrak for only an hour? Philly. Philly. Oh, oh got yeah, it. no, I go back and forth uh, between Philly and New York a lot. Gotcha. I did that, tr that ride once and it was actually so nice. It was like way better. Oh. They had bought me a flight. And I was like, I'm just going to get on the train. Girl, the New York, Philly, D.C., even to Boston, if you can finesse the business class, the train, it is so much better than all of that, the flight mess. And you don't have to go through, like, security like crazy. You can literally show up five minutes before. I mean, why are we? Why, what, why, why don't do we, we have a super rail? Why what? isn't there a super rail? Why don't we have a travel pod? Oh, that all we, we do, do is all we do is talk, talk about, about traveling. traveling. But okay, so you've to, been in L. Oh, sorry, you're coming to New York. Well, I'm also I have in Rhode Island soon oh. enough, so I'm gonna be in the um, East Coast area where okay. they do trains and things. What oh, do you yes, do they they do do trains out there. I do have a gigiana. I hope people come. 
So you've been in me too. You've been in Los La Angeles for about a week now. Yes. Are you living the fantasy? It is the rainiest time it's ever it's been. Insane. But honestly, it's so much better than being in New York right now. Like after I left, it snowed, mm -hmm. and that's the thing is that like people will be like, "Oh my god!" Like you know, like I love the snow, this and the third, and it's like. As a New Yorker, it's like, yeah, you know, like, it's cute to have that little fantasy. But then the next day, it's either just slush or ice. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that lasts for days. Yes. As opposed to the snow. So this trip was, like, perfectly timed. I was like, oh, thank goodness. Like, by the time I get back to New York, I think it's still, it still will be winter. Like, oof, oof. but, like, I think that, like, we'll be, like, creeping into spring because March is when, um... Uh, was it daylight savings happens? We get that extra hour back of sun. So I'm like, they oh. gotta stop with that. We gotta quit I know. it. Arizona doesn't do it, and they're doing fine. Well, no, and that's what we've been saying. We've all we've, we've all, all been, we've saying been saying Arizona is Did that. you have fun at Fat Slut? Oh my god, I had the best time at Fat Slut. And I love doing that. Second party. time doing yes, it's my second time doing Fat Slut. Like literally, like one of my like favorite shows of all time I've ever done. Like. So sickening. First of all, I love a bar that has food. Like, because in New York, we don't really have stuff like that except like $3 bill. Mm -hmm. But like, they have that like in the backyard. That's like a separate, it feels like a separate business. It's like, like a, it yeah. really is. But like, at Precinct, they're just like, someone will come and bring it to you. It's in like the a whole thing. Room. Like, it's just so fabulous. <laughs> like, Oh my God, no. I love Fat Slut. I'm having a- Wait, you forgot to get the fried pickles. You just got the chicken tenders. I did forget to- forget. Me and Willem both said, get the fried pickles. I know. Mm. And you still had me on Willow. the pod. Oh, <laughs> um, working with Willem was fab. It was really fab. She's so lovely. Like, I know. It was. Oh, uh, we didn't get to talk much though. Like, I feel like uh, because of how fast the show runs, it's like we're all just like going in, <laughs> getting ready, doing our number, and then jumping to the next. Like, but I love a tight ship. Don't we all? Okay. Okay. But last night I had the the honor of seeing you grace the showgirl stage for the first I time. I know. No. That was insane. That is a wild experience, is it not? No, I was like so nervous. Like that was the gig that I was like most nervous for because like, I think like showgirls is such, it's it, no, I don't think, it is such an established show. Yes. And so like when um, Morgan was like, oh, like we are gonna have you, I'm like, oh shit. Like I was like, literally like, it's one of those gigs that's like, you think like, oh my God, like you don't just like get the, gig. it's not like you did it until you have impressed people after the gig. Yes. Right. Cause you could get the gig and then it could be like, well, thank you so much for coming. Like, I just hope that flight home is safe, you know? Um, and that's what I was so nervous about. Like in my mind, I was like, what if I do this? And then Morgan McMichaels is like, you know what? Love that energy for you. I hope you do great in Brooklyn, okay? <laughs> <laughs> What was the reaction? She was, oh my God, she was lovely. She told me that I'm welcome back anytime. She was, uh, so nice. she told me I was amazing. And I was like, oh my God, like, are you serious? And she was like, I was like, thank you so much. She's like, don't thank me. It's the truth. And I was like, oh, that's severe. I, it, 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 I think that Morgan gets a bad rap for being like kind of crazy and kind of kooky, but like she truly knows what she's talking about when it comes to drag. She, and when she's putting that show together, like she's been doing it, she knows. She is so in her element in that show. Mm -hmm. She knows how many steps are from the front stage to the second stage, the little dip. She knows when to reach over and grab the tip. Like watching Morgan work the room at Showgirls, you're like, oh, okay, bitch. Yeah. I was because I see why they brought you back just to shoot a ping pong ball out your butthole on that one uh, episode of Drag Race. But it's true. She has like such a, a great technique of like engaging with the audience because when she's <laughs> I love that for you. She's I'm trying, trying to, to pull that hair out. <laughs> when she's like engaging with the audience or walking back and forth, you feel like she looks every single person uh -huh. in the eye. Whereas there's some performers that you'll see in a similar space where all their thought is like just right. grabbing the money and you're like, Yo, you're not engaged in this performance. She is a showgirl. A showgirl. A showgirl. And you were a showgirl. Yes, I was. I was like, okay, like, whoa, like, is this mean my drag is valid? Like. I don't think they'd ever seen a, just like a straight talk through no music. Oh, no, you did oh, no yeah. music? Oh, yeah, she no. She did the Happy Orange commercial, Cole Escola's oh, Happy incredible. Orange. Beginning to end, and everyone just like lost their shit at the end of it. It was so good. I just, I don't know. There's something about that number that's just so, like, so because, like, it's just like, I know it's like an orange juice commercial, but there's something so powerful about like showing up to the gig. Like, because that's the thing, too. Like, I made my showgirls debut in a blue tracksuit and a kitten heel <laughs> and then talked about orange juice. And Morgan McMichael said, 
and we will have you back. <laughs> <laughs> but that's incredible. Was- um, did you have you seen Cole's play? Not yet. I'm trying to go like when I'm back in New York. Okay. I have. I'm so- going on March 24th. Oh, you're maybe- going closing night. Yes. I'll see if there's an extra if there's tickets available because then I'll go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I have potentially two more. We bought the tickets the day it was announced. It was just the only time all my friends and I were going to be able to get there to the same city. Ooh, I'm about to DM her and be like, hey, it's me. I should have just DM'd her. Girl. Because I know. I bought the ticket. I bought the ticket. I bought the ticket. You think she would have got back to you? She barely got back to us to do the show. She gave me her phone number now. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. We had Cole on the show. Oh, sickening. She threw us for a loop. Remember, because you were going to come to that, and then you said, the next day you said, now what time should I show up to the venue? (laughs) Wait, what? what Well, you can go ahead and mark your calendar for for April April 9th, 9th. because we'll be back at the Sultan Room doing a live Sloppy Seconds. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's right. And then I texted you. Was it the day after? It was the day after being like, what time should I get there? I do want to meet Cole. I was like, Diva. Now, (laughs) we normally save the voicemails for the end. Oh. But I want to play this one. It's me. I'm calling from Chicago. It's Dennis. I'm sick, and I wasn't going to call. But I'm calling because I'm sick and tired also of you always going to New York. I am clapping. Like... Nipo at the Target. Come to Chicago. Chicago is ready. Come to Chicago. Come to Market Days. Come on. I don't know. Get me from Chicago. I know you still know people here. That slot in Chicago. Now I'm clapping. So I'm clapping again. I don't want to be a clapper, but you need to come to Chicago. I'm sick and tired of you just going to New York and going to L.A. and going to places in the South. You can't forget about Chicago. I will be there. I'll bring friends. I'll suck Big Dipper's Big Dipper can suck my I don't care. I'll hook up a meatball. I don't care. I'm ready for it all. Just please come to Chicago ASAP. Thanks. Love you guys. Goodbye. Did you feel that aggressive um, audience members in Chicago like that? Did you experience that? No, I experienced a lot of love. Um, that was... Oh I God. am clapping like meatball, meatball in a Target. A target. <laughs> okay, that was so sickening. <laughs> I'm so we sorry. should go to Chicago, but I must say it's a little bit... I've talked to a lot of the queens in Chicago, and it is kind of difficult to find a venue that will allow you to destroy their venue. Oh, yes. sure. And the basement of Metro is hot and steamy. Yeah. Where did you play in Chicago? Where did you do? What gigs did you Not do? Berlin. Well, it's close. Oh, rest in peace. Oh, my gosh. No. Miss Berlin so much, though. Uh, that was where I, what, my first time doing Chicago. I performed there, and it was magical. It, oh, kind, yeah. it felt like yeah. when I did Fat Slut, like that audience reaction. Oh, my God. But um, I when I was in Chicago, I did um, <laughs> Fantasy Nightclub. Okay. Which is, I believe... And if my Chicago divas, please correct me if I'm wrong. They will. Uh, they love to. Oh, they, oh, they <laughs> will. Neutral Gina, come get me. Um, I love her. Oh, my God. You you need to have her for this because I can't imagine what she would say. But um, it's so fantasy is like not I don't believe it's like a gay club. It's like one of those clubs that has gay nights. Mm. So like I did a show called After Midnight there, uh-huh. um, which was really sickening. I did it with Neutral, Arigato. Uh, Lucy Stool, Bambi Lucy. Banks Kool Aid, and oh. Sherry Poppins. Oh, amazing! Oh. That's an incredible lineup. Oh, it was so sickening, um, like it, like really sickening. It was just like, and I could tell it was like a straight club because the stage is like like it's like small but up and elevated. But then the huge dance floor is also your stage. So like the audience is just so far back; they're there. Mm. But like when you're up there. And like when I first walked up there, I was like, "Oh my god!" Like no one came. Oh, I so oh, I hate that feeling. Yeah, we we're just like where you want to perform, but like people are so like far back that you're like, you know, hold on, y'all, let me catch the bus to y'all. <laughs> like, yes. let me. Like, I don't like that. I feel like people should be on the dance floor. Like, I want my audience to be right with me. Right. I yes. don't want to have to like walk around a huge space. It feels weird. It feels well, well like- you love a big old space. Well, I like space to move. Mm. Great. Let's take a break. (laughs) 
and we're back. So Brooklyn drag. Yes. Why? Why not? Mary Cherry. Why? Love her. Love Mary. I'm so sorry. Love Mary down. Why she, are you sorry? Like, Metropolitan barbecue. The Metro barbecue, sickening. Would you okay. eat the hamburgers? Um, I, I didn't. I did do the barbecue once, but the day I did it, it was pouring rain. Oh. And I don't typically eat when I'm in drag. Mm-hmm. So, like, I'll snack on something. If someone hands me something like a chip or like a, like, nothing where I have to, I hope this is a very terrible statement, nothing where I have to really extend my mouth to eat it. Yes. I can't. I can. What do you mean extend? You know, like when you know when you open your mouth, like like imagine like we're at the sauna right now and someone tapped you. Like you know when you're about, you know. She gathered you. But um like this. Yeah, like I just I eating and in drag you is won't not do my that tea. In drag. No. I just I just don't Delta like won't drag. either. I guess that's true. Because it's you know what it is? It's like because like what you know when you're eating something and you're just like okay she's back at Steamworks okay <laughs> um, back that uh, like when my, you eat I'm in drag for me ooh, it's just like what I'm like I always think like what if I take the wrong bite and it gets on me because obviously this is all makeup so I'm right. like you can't just wipe that off it's so I'll just like I said that like that one like if someone's like here's like um like a very like skinny petite fry I'm like. Give me that. Or yes. like you could put your nail into like a tiny gherkin. Yes. Small food. Small yes. food. Yes. Because see, when I do my makeup at Precinct, I like start on my eyes and then I order food. So I'm like eating it as I'm doing my eye makeup, but then that's the last thing I eat yes. until the makeup is off. Because huh. you don't want to get grease in your like mouth area. Yeah. Exactly. So many things we don't think about. Exactly. And we can't pee. Yeah, can't pee, can't do anything. And then also if you if you like um, if you pad for your drag, like I wear like these like thick pads, so I have to wear like a lot of tights. That puts a lot of pressure on my body. So like right. if I eat, I like I can feel that I've mm-hmm. eaten. I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. It does. I when I used to corset all the time, I could like feel the food sitting. Like if I were to eat like something in drag and like with all that on, I would just want to throw it back up. So it's wow. I know performance art though performance like maybe you could make Brooklyn. that a number so Brooklyn weird. I could make that a number and probably like charge I don't know $50 at the door for it oh my god you Brooklyn should. Art Basel I could do this do they do a Brooklyn Art Basel hell no <laughs> not yet <laughs> <laughs> what I love where the millennial you, where did you get your name from Etsy no I <laughs> Um, so I came up with my name before I even thought to do drag. Um, it was in college because um, I used to always get mistaken for a cis woman, mm. and which never bothered me. I was like, okay, like that's the T. Come on now, stop playing with it. And <laughs> stick it I, in. Stop playing with it. Oh, not stick it in, please. At least get me a glass of wine. But. I was like, what? Y'all don't like a little sip of something? Jesus. Tequila. Oh and meth. And meth. Girl, the meth, please. We'll get to it. Oh, my God. Not the meth, girl. But um, <laughs> basically, like, my name came from the fact that, like, it was actually, like, I came up with it in a moment of, like, anger at someone. Mm. Basically, like, um, I knew this girl who I was friends with, and... She would like, you know, like, oh, like she's over there, this and the third. And it never bothered me. And I never corrected her because I was like, okay, T. Like, um, but she was like a um, like very small town. So she would like do this thing where she'd be like, oh my God, I didn't mean to say that like very loudly. And like it'd be mm-hmm. like a whole moment where she's like, I didn't mean to say that. You're not that, blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, like that would bother me more. Because mm-hmm. then, because it was such a, a visceral reaction, like, in my mind, I'm like, people are going to think I'm like a tender queer. Like, don't call me. Th- or you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. Because her overreaction to your slight correction. Yeah. And even then, I wouldn't even correct. Oh. I'd be she, like, would she would be just like, catch herself oh, my mistake. I called you a woman. Yes. Oh, I hate that. It'd be like, it'd be like, oh, my God. Like, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't mean to say that. Like, I know you're not one. And I'm like, I'm not. And then it'd be like. <laughs> I'm not? Um, me? <laughs> and then I'd be like. I'd be like, no, it's fine. Like, I tried to, like, play it cool. Because, like, it was, I was in college. And, like, it was just this one time she did it in, like, a crowded hallway. And people just, like, stopped and, like, looked at me. And I got – I was very pissed. And I didn't want to, like, have, like, a pissed reaction. So I just kind of, like, took a breath. And I was like, you know what? Because, like, 
I was just like, you know what? Don't even bother apologizing. Why don't you call me? And I literally went, Miss, ma'am, she. And then I was like, that'd be a sickening drag name. And I just held on to that for like a year and a half before I even considered starting doing drag. Wow. Because I'd never heard a name like that. Yeah, no, it's gorgeous. Thank you. The fantasy, right? Like, Mr. Serhi. You no, know Mr. Serhi is giving it to me right now, okay? Mm-hmm. Okay, come on now. Oh, oh, oh. Is there a house of she? Um, I don't have any kids, Um, but I do have a drag mother. Oh, okay. Um, my drag mother is Iron Quartz. So I'm technically, I'm technically. She lives here though. She does live here. She's, uh, she just moved to LA like a few months ago. Fun. Um, so technically, I guess like if the IRS was calling, it would be Miss Ma'am She Quartz. Um, I, she's my mother. I have a sister named Audra Quartz back in Brooklyn. And then I have a drag sibling who doesn't do drag anymore, but they go by Alopexian Quartz. Nice. But I never, ha- I never, I literally told her, I was like, girl, like, it I'm doesn't make sense to add, like, it's just, like, we could, like, it'll be a secret. Yeah, you're yeah, my mama, really but I'm not doing quartz. Yeah. Just like, I'm not Meatball Beat You. You know what right. I mean? But Marta Beat You Is did beat you the first time. Drag mother, yes. Exactly. Have you met her? No. Okay. So you just won a Glammy Award in this dress. I yes, yeah, so this um this dress I wore to the Glam Awards two years ago, um when I won Best Comedy Performer for the first time. I just re won it, which was crazy. Oh, fun. Um, two awards. Uh, yes, more than no, me. This is my like, this is my favorite dress. This is um a Tom Ford like recreation uh, made by Ten Yards Clothing. Nice. Um, I there's just something so I, I just was like I saw because I was at um. I tend to um, go off a lot. Sorry, go off, ma'am. She no. Um, <laughs> I um, I went to the Met, and after they had the American Gala, sure. And when I was walking through it, I saw this dress on a mannequin, and um, a it's man. A, uh, oh, a theta kid. A mammoth. A theta A mammoth. A mammoth. A mammoth. A Mammager, okay. <laughs> and so I saw this and like it was this, it's a Tom Ford dress. And I just remember seeing this and be like, this was like elegant, like black dress I've ever seen. Sure. And I just remember being like, you know, the day like something comes up where I need something like really chic and like and glamorous, like I will have this recreated. So when I got nominated for that award last year, I was like, I need to it was like I'd never been to this uh, to the Glam Awards or anything, so I was like, I would, I want to go and like have a moment because I'm not performing. Um, I was nominated for Best Comedy Performer and Breakthrough Artist, so I was like, I wanted to like look fab. Sure. Like I didn't want to just show up and be like, hey, like I'm a drag queen in like a sparkly dress. Like I wanted to be like fab. No shade to the Glam Awards or like the divas because drag, <laughs> drag is all inclusive, darling. As we learned with your appearance as Showgirls. Okay. Did you just call me valid? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are the Glammys for people who don't know? So the Glams is like the New York Nightlife Awards. Mm-hmm. And so it's been happening for, I believe this was just the 25th one. Wow. So it's been going on for 25 years. And it's like, um, it's really sickening. Like it right now, it's at Stony Hall, um, which I think it, they moved there only a few years ago. And like, yeah, when well, I did huge. it, it was at like that club. You did it? In the, I performed there a couple of times. It was at the club. Were you nominated for something? No. Okay. Just a performer. What? Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a performance space. It's a, it's a hall. They do a show. Yeah. Yeah. When, when it was, uh, at the, the venue, the nightclub that was at like the basement of the out hotel. Do you remember? Yes, this? I think so. What was that? Rock, rock car, XL, night, XL nightclub or something like that. One of those. So there's just so many in New York yeah. at this point. A lot of clubs. A lot of clubs. Who picks who's nominated? Um. So it's first they'll they'll put out something where um they put out it's like a anyone can like nominate. a form yeah like yeah. it's like uh. you so basically you can only nominate if you are a part of new york city nightlife so it's not just for like drag performers it's right. for like the djs the promoters the um the go-go's the anybody who's a part of nightlife you know 
And so basically, like, you have to, like, DM the glam page or Cherry Jubilee who runs it. Mm -hmm. And you have to be like, hey, like, I'm a part of Nightlife. And then she gives you a code. And then you get a form that you can fill out it's online. Legit. Oh, no, That's it's legit. a whole thing. And you have to put, like, I believe it's, like, you have to write down, like, three names, like, for each category for who you would Holy want nominated. Um, and, like, and they're, like, you know, because it goes from, like, you know, best dance performer, best comedy performer, breakthrough artist, best go-go, best party, best host, best club, best bar, you know, right. um, best event. And it's, like, a whole thing. And, like, honestly, like, some of the categories, like, uh, they'll be, like, you know, best male performer. And, um, like, for something like that, I'll be, like, oh, I don't really, like, know too many like go-go's and stuff because i don't work at like those clubs like that right so i'll like call my friends and be like girls you gotta give me a name you gotta give me a name right now you don't you better not get your your nominations revoked for next year by telling her okay to, all the, to all the best male performers i am sorry this is my apology this is my youtube apology hold on i am sorry one tier as of <laughs> as a valid brooklyn performer by coastal by coastal um in a human unit. Um, I am sorry for my ignorance. Um, love you down though. And when we see each other, we will have a drink. Slay. Let's take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Love you down. And we're back. Do you know Wicked? Yes. What do you think about the second act? Of the musical? Yes. I mean. Act one ends when she's elevated on a scissor lift into the sky and she sings, ooh, ah, dun! And then you go for about 15, 20 minute break. You go pee, you get another cocktail, you grab a t-shirt, you sit down and it opens up. Grab a t-shirt. No, and you grab that t-shirt, that $75 t-shirt. $75. Okay. Gotta get a t-shirt. Broadway. Get that. Um... And the second act of, act of Wicked. Um, I will say every time I go, I've seen Wicked like live. Mm -hmm. I forget that they do tie in the Wizard of Oz. Yes. Like every single time. I'm like, oh, how they do bring her out. How many times? <laughs> they do bring, bring her out. They do bring out Dorothy. How many times have you seen Wicked? Every time you go, you said. I think I've seen Wicked like four times in my life. Gag. I've seen, I've seen it when I was a kid. Um, a kid. My my parents took me to see it like twice. A, ki a child. A, chi a child. Wait, what's wrong with her being a child? There's nothing wrong with it. I just keep forgetting how old no, I am. No, I mean, I, technically I am 15. I am here on a work study. But... Um, Go cancel the rest of the talking points for the pod. Okay, don't show what I'm drinking. And so... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you a born and raised New Yorker? Yes. Oh. Uh, uh, that explains Going so down much. to the Wicked after school just to have a good time. Let me go <laughs> run, the, run the Wicked Lottery, get my Broadway show on just to keep and me And you busy went to college in New home. York too? I did. So, oh. Oh, okay. okay. I, I just stayed in New York because for me it was like, you know, why leave? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, now that you I'm, yell at people on the street? No. Unless someone like, like, I have to be like in the mood. Like if someone like, like really tries me, like I will be like, and why don't you go fuck yourself? Oop. Like, you know what okay. I mean? What about this situation? You're what? standing on a street corner. Shut up. You're standing on a street corner. Uh -huh. You're on the southern side of it. Okay. Cars are coming at you this way. Okay. You're waiting for a taxi. Hand okay. up. Hi. Okay. Someone else walks up onto the, the corner in front of you. You uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Across the street. They raise their hand. They get the taxi first. Do you cuss them out? No, because I would have to walk over to do that. I'm not oh, screaming. Oh, no, you didn't, because I screamed. I just oh, screamed you do? at them. I said, you ancient bitch, I've been waiting for five minutes. And she went and got in. Well, because should I have fought her? in her mind, and I think in any New Yorker's mind, you should know better about where to stand to get that cab. Yeah, and if it's across the street, I'm like, okay, the driver didn't want me. Like, sometimes people don't want you in life. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes we're not going to get picked, you know? We can't all be the main character. Like sometimes, ah! No, don't, please. Not the lace front. <laughs> it's like how people really know where to get on the train. Yes. yes. So that it's yes. right by their exit, so they save their 25 steps. Oh, that's me. Steps. I, always, I love doing oh. that. I always know what, like, Which especially, per, like, in terms of station, uh -huh. where to stand, where I'll be like, 
this area of the train will have the least people because at the station behind it, the stairs aren't there. They're further back. Yeah, like, That's what I do. Or like this car will not have human turds in it. Clock it. Flip it. Bop it. Reverse it. Kill it. Twist it. Shake it. She said that one to you. Bake it. Top it. Verse it? No. <laughs> <laughs> At least it rhymed. Um, you are a viral doll. Yes. You stay going viral. <laughs> it's getting them sicker. <laughs> <laughs> How do you... Where do you think you're going? Girl. <laughs> How do you translate your humor from the internet to real life? How do you choose what you want to make videos of? And do are you thinking about oh, this will really get them? Or are you just like, this is funny, this is funny to me, and that's all that matters? So for me, like, it's always been, like, if I laugh at it, I'll post it. Sure. Like, I don't really, like, because I know that, like, part of, like, being a drag performer nowadays is that you have to be your own social media manager to do things. Mm -hmm. And I get that. And, like, it is, like, tough because, like, I, I will see, like, divas who like put a lot of work into like a certain amount of content and creating this stuff. But for me, like I just make videos like really randomly, like when I'm inebriated, like the videos that have gone viral, like the, um, the like uh, when people, people used to quote me for like, hi diva. Right. Um, I'm just not feeling this one. I was like two frozen margaritas in outside of the Rosemont. And I had saw that grinder video and I was like, now hold on now. You know what'd be really funny? And I literally told a friend, like, hold a light up. I have something really funny. And I just filmed that, like not thinking anything of it. Right. Um, the Domino's video. Those ones are wild. Um, that one, that one I, I like will play with the editing. I edit them while I'm still like either drunk or high. In the moment. Uh, like in the moment. Cause like in that mind, like my mind's running and be like silly goofy. Mm -hmm. Like at that mind, <laughs> like in that moment, I'm just like, wow, like I'm just like content creator tease. Like that video wasn't, I wasn't even gonna film that. I, cause that was, oh my God, that was like last summer or something. Yeah, it was. And basically, like I have, so basically, I do a Friday show at Good Judy's in Park Slope. Mm -hmm. And I do it with my sister, Roque. We do the early show called After Afters Pre Brunch, the early show. Um, something simple for the children to something remember. Something simple. What, how kids. early is it? Eight to 10. Oh, oh, so you could do that. And I've go actually to fat honestly slut. been thinking about doing an early show like that. It's so fab. Like, because then, like, when it's over, you could, if you want to, Go to another show, or you could go home at a decent time and go to bed. Like talk about the bed. You know I what I love mean? Bed. Let's not bring the bed into this. Okay. Talk about no. the meth. <laughs> talk about the meth. Ta oh, not the meth. <laughs> um oh yeah. So basically like um like Fridays, like it's that it's our show, and then the late show is called Bad Judy's with Blue and Rain. Mm. And like like when like uh Roque and I aren't busy like we will stay for their show and then we'll all hang out afterward fun and basically like, our show had ended and their show was like like either like finishing up or something and we were like oh like let's get let, like like let's get dominoes so I was with um Malibu who is Rain's drag daughter and she's like, oh, I'll come with you to get these pizzas. I'm like, okay, sickening. Like, I look so silly right now. Like, please come with me. <laughs> and I don't know why. Like, that mug, I've never really done, like, a mug like that from that video. Like, I was just like, let me be a drag queen for this. And she literally, we get outside, and she goes, do you want me to just record you walking to get this pizza? And I was like, sure. And I don't, like, as soon as she did that, I was just like, you caught me. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like was, oh, come follow me. Like, I was, <laughs> or okay. So, but in Chicago, you must have thought that through because you found the spot where yes, the, the rat, rat hole. hole was in Chicago, mm. and you purposely were like, just come look at the, and like did yes. that. So, did how was that? Like, did you? So, <laughs> well, not like how was that, but like you had to think of that ahead of time, and you're like, I'm gonna be in Chicago. I want to find the rat hole. It wasn't like just a spur of the moment thing. So, long story short. I texted neutral. She was like, where are you staying? I sent her my Airbnb and she was like, you are two blocks from the rat hole. And uh, so Sherry and I were like, let's go take photos of it like after one of the gigs. And then after, I forgot which gig, um, we were like still up. We literally like walked two short blocks and it just there it was. 
And so in that moment, I was like, okay, like, I guess I'll film something. So sure, literally, yeah. it was just like, what? I think I did it twice, like two takes. I was like, because I was like, when it comes to stuff like that, like pre-planning it, and my, I always get in my mind, I'm like, oh, now it feels, now it just feels so like, I think the appeal of me is that like, I film these things very, uh, like off the cuff off the cuff yeah like the editing yeah i'll do like i'll be like what if i just add this song to this yes like me adding uh mitsuki to me seeing the rat hole yeah. and there's like a vial of testosterone in it with what? like change <laughs> yeah I was, like, what that's was so that about apparently um there's been like there was like a problem or like it was a thing that like when that when the rat hole like blew up people were like coming out to do things at the rat hole like i think someone like got engaged at that 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 hole apparently Someone got married. I saw a bunch so, of TikToks of people like throwing change in it and they're like giving penance to the rat hole or whatever and they're like trying to like, it's a whole thing. And I'm just like, I, that's just so sickening. I'm like, and so like when I saw it, I was like, okay. And it's the fact that if you go to Chicago, it's on like maps. Like if you just like look through the area, it's one of those things that pops up as like a, a spot. Like as a landmark, as an official, rat like rat, like sh- the rat hole. The rat hole. Yes. Chicago rat hole is a hole shaped like a rat. In the sidewalk of West Roscoe Street, the Roscoe Village neighborhood of oh. Chicago. Okay. So it's by, is it by Roscoe's? No. No, Roscoe's is not in Roscoe Village, surprisingly. But it's on Roscoe's. Yes, because Roscoe runs east-west in the city, and Roscoe Village is... Oh, you can't say a single word to her without getting made fun of. Shall we listen to a voicemail? Yes! Yes! Well, yes! yes. It's me. I'm calling from Chicago. Oh, it's <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's getting great. Uh, the pump hey, and dump ready. I was just hey, listening kitties. to your podcast from Lee this week, and I have to say, I love the destigmatization of small dick top and hung bottom. Sometimes, as a top, I mean, my dick is pretty average, but I like the top, and I don't need to be taking a nine and a half inch. <laughs> I mean, I must dip her too. I love, She's love, old. love an older man with a huge <laughs> that I can just. The <laughs> best. But I <laughs> on it last time, and I don't want to do that again. So I love, love, love the pod. Love you guys. Hopefully, get to see you during Bear Weekend in Palm Springs. Maybe not. I don't know if you guys are headed to Palm Springs or not. But uh, anyways, bye. Dipper will be there for Bear Weekend. It, I will not be. It will have passed. It will have passed. Did you like the riff at the end? No. Um, I yeah. I mean, more power <laughs> to the people. More power to the people that can take like a giant nine inch, ten inch. <laughs> I've only done it once or twice, and to be honest, it wasn't like super pleasurable. But I was like proud of myself. It's the psycho twinks who take ten emodium and spend two hours douching who can take the nine inch. <laughs> well, yes. But I, uh, yeah, I yeah. <laughs> that's what they do. That's what the that's what the psycho twinks do. Yes, I don't know. Like, I think it's always so like um, interesting. Like when I'm out with the divas, and they'll be like, you know, like I just need someone to like wreck me, and like that's crazy. Um, is that bad to say? No. Like, that's, like, like whatever you can fit in your parking spot, like I think that's sickening. Yes. Yeah. Whether it you know is a buggy or a bus, like go for it. Um. But I just think, like, because I, 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 you know, a few of my friends, like, are, like, power bottoms and stuff of that nature. And I'm just, like, doesn't it get tired? Like, the same way, like, people, like, will say to drag queens, doesn't it get tiring always being on? Sure. Isn't it, isn't it yeah. tiring always being ready? Like, David? You know? I, l- I hate having to always be on. You know, like, I mean, because, my God, like, you've, like, you know, it's, what, like, what did you say? How many Amodium? Ten, Ten Amodium. Ten Amodium. This is what some twink bottom told us at the Game Porn Awards. I don't believe him. Max I think he Lord. Was, I think he might have been on no. when I was on a couple nights ago. No. There uh, is, like, he said this in multiple interviews. Oh, that's crazy. I think if you have to, I think, I mean, if if you're doing it for yourself, like, <laughs> I mean, sure. Like, if if that is like your thing, like he might be doing it for his family. You don't know what he does with his earnings. Like, I know people. Like, like I said, like I know like bottom, like power bottoms and bottoms, like who will be like, for me, the pleasure is like the fact that it's painful. And I'm like, that's so crazy. That's crazy to me. Like, I'm like, do you like, do you need a hug? Do you need better help? Like, no, they want to. They, they want a swift kick it. to the face. That's if like the pleasure this, is the pain. That's what like people who are into. 
fucking like. It's like more of the pain and the lack of control. Like, girl, they don't talk about no pain when the f- happens. They talk about the pleasure. Pleasure. Well, anyway, I think little d- great, big d- wonderful. Whatever you want to do. How about medium? Is all- medium d- is beautiful. No, it's all sickening. Like, <laughs> I yes. Come I on, genitals are sickening. Okay.